Hi, this is Barry from Scotland. You are watching Trucker Josh Vlogs on YouTube, along with the real star of the show, The Diesel. Mind the subscribe. Good morning everybody. It's Friday morning. I've got to take old blue in to get the satellite installed at work. So it's 7.15 right now. I want to be there for 8 o'clock. So we'll get her started up. Old blue, what's up? It recognizes me. It shouldn't take too long. They say it takes about an hour, hour and a half or so. And uh, it'll just be mounted right over there. Just on the edge of my uh, driver's side dash there, on the passenger side. That way Diesel can keep an eye on it and uh, he's responsible for the e-logs. So if anything's wrong with my e-logs or anything doesn't look good, blame Diesel. It's his fault. Okay, he's taking responsibility for that side of the business. I'm just driving. One more piece added to Old Blue today. So this is the satellite e-log system, uh, it's an Omnitrack system and this uh, pinpoints my location uh, to work so they know where I am for safety reasons, also for delivery reasons so that they know where I am. Uh, if I all of a sudden go dark and uh, they I don't answer my phones and I have a load of their freight behind me, they, they know where my truck is, that's the reason they, they would have that there and also if I, the truck were to get stolen. Uh, we know exactly where the truck is, like pinpoint to within like a foot. <laughs> and it also houses my uh, e-log system. So I am on e-logs, we travel into the US and e the US has the e-log mandate. Canada is following along with that e-log e mandate, I think this year. Though mostly everybody in Canada already uses e-logs because we all drive to the States. And if you want to drive in the States, you got to have e-logs. So we. They don't bother me that much. I mean, paper logs, of course I liked paper logs more. Everybody does. It is what it is, right? There's no use complaining about it. There's enough people on the internet complaining about that already, though I won't add to it. I don't like it, but I don't hate it either. So we're here in the yard. One more step before we can get old blue running. And that's the decals on the side of the door. That's coming on Monday. They actually have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they have uh, professionals that are coming here to the yard to install them for me, to make sure they're done right. I was gonna do them myself at first, but when I thought about it, they offered to get it done like professionally. And you know what? I'm probably gonna mess it up. Let's just get someone who knows what they're doing to come and throw them on the doors for me so that I don't get any bubbles or, or get them crooked. I want them straight and put on properly. Okay, so these guys know what they're doing. They'll put them on for me. I'm gonna take one more trip in the Volvo. It's parked right there. So I've got to move this bedding from in here into there. I already got it all set up in here. I was kind of hoping and hoping and praying that my decals would be ready today. They're not. So I've got to make some money. I can't just sit at home forever. So they, they are nice enough to let me use uh, one of their trucks. As an owner operator, I believe that I'm, uh, I, I rent a truck from them then to, to use, but at least I've got income coming in that way. And uh, when I get back, uh, we're going to Red Deer, Alberta. So it'll be a little, a little bit further away than Saskatoon. I'm gonna leave tomorrow. Gotta deliver first thing Monday morning and then we have a reload already lined up and booked. It's gonna bring us straight back to the yard here and when we get back here, Old Blue will have the decals nicely placed on her. She'll be ready to go. I can literally just take whatever few things I have in the Volvo, throw them in Old Blue, hook onto a new load and psh, head out in Old Blue. It's getting cold, but it's taking so long at the same time. I wish I could take the family in here. Could you imagine Brit and all of our dogs in here? Wow, I'd have to get this thing detailed after that. So Diesel will be coming with me in this truck. And it is a lot of work having a dog in the truck with you. Uh, it doesn't stink up the truck as long as you keep up with it. It actually, the truck smells really good. Even after like all my trucks in the past, 
as long as you have a, a proper air freshener, you vacuum every day, maybe twice a day, and you just keep it clean. And you know, with this truck, probably every quarter, every three months or so, I'm gonna bring it across uh, uh, just a little ways away from where my shop is, get it professionally detailed on the inside, just to keep it clean. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. I'm not going trucking without the weasel though. It's just, it just wouldn't be right, wouldn't be right. So with having a dog in the truck brings, you know, hair and dust. You just gotta work harder to keep it clean. But uh, we're still gonna turn this thing into a show truck. It'll be a working show truck. You'll see, you'll see. People don't believe me when I say it, you'll see. You know me, you, those of you who've been watching me long enough. If I say something that I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. Uh, I will find a way. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna take you along for the journey. One more trip in the Volvo, just one more. We'll see you soon, old blue. Okay, we'll see you soon. Next time, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll be, I'll see her before I leave again. I'll come say goodbye, obviously. But when I get back from this trip in this Volvo, those decals will be on there. I am told this by the people that be, that by the time I get back, it'll be good to go. I'm not gonna be packing a whole bunch of stuff into that Volvo, it's just gonna be one trip. It'll be uh, two nights there, two nights back, know, three, three nights, maybe four. We're gonna try to make it three. I don't wanna move a whole bunch of stuff in and move a whole bunch of stuff back out, you know? Something's different. Got rid of that carport finally. And it's really opened up the yard. Except now you can see what we were storing in there. <laughs> Our old washer and dryer and an old freezer. I'm gonna have to throw those out in the garbage. Uh, I'll have to bring those to the dump or the... The place where you bring those things. Uh, figure that out. I think it's at the dump. But I gotta get rid of these. These are garbage. Uh, none of them work. And since they were always out of sight, out of mind, in the carport, I kept forgetting to do anything about them. Now that they're out here in the backyard, in plain sight, making us look a little redneck, it's gonna remind me. Gotta get rid of those things ASAP. So it cleans it up a little bit. I was able to sweep off the cement pad a little bit yesterday. I didn't have time to get everything done. It took most of the evening to get the whole carport down. I wanted to get that down before I left again. All right, now we'll just clean everything up. You can tell we just need to rake up all our leaves yet. That apple tree is blossoming nicely now. But yeah, what do you guys think? Makes it a lot bigger out here, eh? More room for the dogs. We're gonna leave the gravel here. Uh, I think we're gonna build a, a little deck over it, yes, so we can have this sitting area just elevated just a little bit. May as well, it's a nice level packed surface. We'll see. Next we'll be uh, cleaning all of this. Ah, it does feel good though to be outside and be comfortable. It feels like just last week there was like four feet of snow right here where I'm sitting. Well, I would be in the carport right behind where I'm, where I'm sitting. And now look at this, it's beautiful. Mm. Manitoba is very interesting weather-wise. It's got extremes in all directions. Every season is distinct. So you have winter, which is just intense, intense cold, lots of snow, at least this year we had lots of snow, but it's always cold, like minus 50, minus 55. It's a normal, normal winter. Then you get spring where everything is melting, right? And since we're uh, on the floodplain here in like southern Manitoba, all the water from out west and from the northern Midwest of the U.S., a lot of that water comes here. It's, it gets very wet in spring. And this year we had some flooding. Uh, that's... It's gone now, I think, or at least it's well on its way out. Uh, all that water heads up to the Hudson's Bay, makes its way to the ocean up there. And uh, summer, it's hot. Hot and sunshiny. Like, we're talking like 100, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. 
like 30, 40 degrees Celsius. It gets hot. And then fall time, you know, all the trees change color. Lots of leaves and, uh, you know, it's sweater weather, what we call it, or bonfire weather. Fall time is great. I like spring myself. This is my favorite month, my favorite season in June because everything is green. The moisture and all the, all the wetness from spring is going away. We still got some back here, but that's because the spring has been crazy. And uh, everything's turning green, yet you have the whole promise and the whole expectation and excitement that summer is coming. You have all of this excitement that there's so much fun things coming in the next few months. Whereas in fall, some people really like fall. It's beautiful colors and, and uh, yeah, it's nice, cool weather. But there's always that feeling of dread in the back of your mind that you know winter's coming next. <laughs> Uh, we're Canadians out here, but it doesn't mean we have to like the cold. I mean, we deal with it. We deal with it pretty well, I think. We know how to do cold. We know how to stay warm, but it doesn't mean we like it. <laughs> we just have no choice. <laughs> I already live, like, as far south, like, in southern Canada as I can, pretty much. I can go to southern Ontario if I want to pay, like, a million dollars for a house. But no thank you. Canada's such a big country. When people say, uh... You know, do you know this person in Ontario? Well, that's uh, that's like a 24-hour drive away from me. No, I don't know them. No, Canada's a huge country. It takes over a week to drive from coast to coast, east to west. I'm going out to Alberta uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's video, and uh, that's over a day's drive, and that's just two provinces over. That's just in the same region. That's still in the Prairie region. That's not even to the next region yet. That's uh, 14, 15, 1,400 kilometers where I'm going. So like, uh, almost, almost a thousand miles, like what, 850, 900 miles? And that's just, we have, it's a small part of the country. There's a lot more to see, as you've seen in my past videos. So it's interesting and it's kind of funny when you see Europeans come to Canada and they're like, oh yeah, we can just drive to Calgary, right? We'll go check out Calgary, go there for lunch, come back. Uh, or like, yeah, they'll just land in Toronto. Oh, we'll just drive to Winnipeg. Okay. <laughs> it's a two-day drive. Uh, but you can't blame them. You can't blame them in Europe. I mean, you drive two days and uh, you're in a completely different country. I mean, from, from, let's say, Germany. If you drive two days east, you'd be in Russia already, wouldn't you? Ugh. <gasps> If you drive two days west, you'd probably be in the ocean. It's much different, uh, different world out there. This is the new world, right? The old world is very tight and compact, and everything's close together, and people are close together. Whereas here in the new world, uh, in North America, sort of like the new Europe, it's everything is everything is spread spread out, and that's why gas prices affect us a lot right away. Because to get from point A to B here, there's long distances between civilizations, long empty distances. And when fuel prices skyrocket in our personal vehicles, like it, it, it hits us harder. And I think that's why our, like we've worked hard, our governments have worked hard to keep our prices cheaper than Europe. Europe's always been very expensive for fuel. Like we're, what we're paying now for fuel here in Manitoba is like what Europe is usually paying on a normal day. And this is just ridiculously expensive for us because everything is so far apart here. To get anywhere, you need to drive long distances and we need to be able to have affordable fuel just to survive, just to live here, right? Just go get groceries and stuff. Get to work. This guy has a lot to say. He wants to be in the vlog. But anyways, uh put this together now and I get a few things done yet tomorrow we'll be back trucking I'll be back in the Volvo so if you like Volvos hey tune in